It really sucks. Look at last year. Philly Helium was doing a show on Wednesdays. Secret headline. Sold out every week. I think that's a brilliant idea. They don't know who the headliner is. They'll pay the 20. It could be a good guy or it could be a shitty guy. But it's people who want to sit down and get that different experience. They want to maybe, let's go. We're not doing nothing. We're going to sit at home and watch Ozark again. You know, some guy fucking laundry money. Hello. Anyway, you know, everybody talks about, oh, I got to stay in and watch Ozark. Go fuck yourself. You never even sold a nickel bag. Get the fuck out of my face. You're living vicariously by these fucking half a fag actors. Get the fuck out of here. So, you know, that, that guy in Seattle ended up killing himself. Me and Josh laughed about it when we got here. Like I, We didn't laugh about it. He just said, you know, that kid killed him. So we were like, it surprises you. He went up on stage with a fucking uh, with a fucking handcuff and a suit on. There was another guy that would just go up there and say, you know, this is my impersonation of a bird. There was another guy that would just go up there with a ukulele. I remember in Denver, there was a guy that would go up on stage and tape his set and then come back to me and hit record. I mean, first of all, this kid was... Nice kid. Tons of money. Tons of money. For you com young comics that have tons of money that want to spend 10000 on a promo pack, don't do it. Because if you're not experienced, this guy had, not only did he have money, this motherfucker, he was like 25. He found like a 50-year-old girl to finance his comedy career. She was buying him $1,000 suits for him to get on stage. He had a promo pack. That was second to none. Like, if you call me and go, Joey, I don't mean to bother you. You're doing a show here on the third. Can I get a promo pack, bitch? You're going to get a fucking, you're going to get a headshot and a resume. And it's going to be an old resume. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not going to be updated because I don't give a fuck about that shit anymore. You saw me on the TV, right? That's all you need to know. What, what, what episode or what? Who gives a fuck? So, what are we talking about? Promo packs. <laughs> the who? The promo pack. So this motherfucker would send you a promo pack. That was a box. It was a fucking box in the mail. It would come to you like this. You would take it out, put it down, and one side would open, and it would have like pictures and a bunch of lies about newspaper reviews. Like he just said, the London Post said brilliant and you know heartwarming. The Jersey Journal said fucking uh, yeah. anyway. And he put that on the end, and then he would make these clips at his house. This is 1990, guys. 91 when I met this kid. I hung out with this kid from 91 to about 95, and I really tried to fucking help him as a comedian. One day I got in his car, and he goes, you can't talk for an hour. And I go, why not? What's going on? He goes, I thought it was like a Ramadan dude or one of those motherfuckers. He goes, no, no, no. I'm going to listen to my tape of me fighting hecklers. So it was just a tape of him with his wife or girlfriend yelling like, hey, where'd you learn how to whisper in a helicopter and all this shit? Like, just all these stock. Like, you know, like when you go to a comedy club, if you don't go to a fucking improv or one of those, if you go to like a lesser known comedy club behind a bowling alley or something like that, you're going to see comics that, I don't know, they talk about shit like that. You know, they, that's their world of, of comedy. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. This is terrible. I can't be smoking dope anymore in the morning. I smoke some of that fucking, uh, holy shit. Weed sometimes, if you put it away, that motherfucker picks up momentum. It's like an expired Vicodin. You ever need an expired Vicodin, dog? Those motherfuckers do not fuck around. Usually two of those, like when somebody says to me they got some expired shit at the house, I go, give me 10 minutes. Let me swing by and see what you got. Because I know some people who love expired medications. <laughs> <laughs> but dog I put away some of that fucking the white truffle is like 26% 27% it's okay I put some away the other day and I found it and it was drier than shit you know when that weed gets dry and the fucking THC comes to the top and it coats that bud I mean these buds were terrible looking I fucking zipped it up and I smoked last night I was doing it last night because I came down here about one I could not fucking sleep uh, Sunday night, and I fucking came down here about one. I go, what the fuck am I going to do? So I rolled up a joint of uh, the the white truffle, and I put some heavy-duty fucking, what do you call that, Keith. Shakif and that shit. 
But then I found this other weed that me and Mike had smoked last week, the L- London Licinesis. What was that? We smoked something lime, something. It was something that, that was came. Lemon Snickers. Lemon Snickers. I found the lemon Snickers, and it that was, was dry, brittle, dry. It was hidden behind an old picture of Uncle Joey. I saw it back there. Like, what the fuck is this? Let me tell you something. I cut that motherfucker up with a scissor. I didn't even put it up in the grinder. You know when it gets that brittle? Fuck the grinder. You're just gonna take all those beautiful little fucking glass. I cut that motherfucker up. It had to be. A joint. It was a big fucking bazooka type joint, and I put some keef in that motherfucker, and I rolled it up last night. Oh my god! I went outside and I smoked that. And I just sat outside and looked around. I saw some deer walking around. I don't know what. I saw like a possum or a raccoon. He wasn't close to me. He was like across the street. Huge motherfuckers. And I came inside last night and I ate a bag of blueberries and a half a bag of those cherries. Woo! I took a shit this morning. It was, you know those shits that you feel like you got raped? You ever take those shits that you feel like it burns? burns, Like when you get out of the bathroom two hours later, your body feels all crooked? Like that's the shit I took this morning. My body was all crooked when I walked out of there. Oh my God. Anyway, who needs to know about that shit? Back to the open mic. What I was trying to say to you guys, that an open mic is a fucking, uh, a good open mic. Like I love to do an open mic here. Like, I really love to do, it can't be at a comedy club because I like to have everything involved. I like to have some acoustic, some fucking, like, somebody who throws cards, maybe a magician that the bird gets stuck, like an apprentice magician. Dog, that's the funniest thing you'll ever see. The birds get stuck on the light. You know, he doesn't connect the ropes and shit. Oh, my God. Have one of those. And, like... There used to be the show in Vegas years ago with midgets. You know, I, I forgot the fucking name. When I first started comedy, it was fucking crazy. He was still trying to do it years ago or whatever. I'd like to do something like that in an open mic setting, which is craziness to really prepare because you need an audience that will give you some shit. I'm sorry to say. With, with an open mic, you do need it for the audience. Like in Houston, we used to do open mic. Every three comics, somebody would yell something. You know, and that, listen, if it's not mean, if it's not like when we were doing the open mic, the guy, yeah, if it's kind of like the guy that used to do the open mic and say, this is my impersonation of a bird. This is my impersonation of a flower. One day we just yelled up towards the end, do an impersonation of a comic. (laughs) And you could hear the, (laughs) he just fractured, walked off and never came back. He probably went to a fucking open mic at a poetry reading because every every fucking open mic is different.